the DualSense Wireless Controller. With its sleek visual design and immersive haptic feedback capabilities, this is a peripheral that goes far beyond anything we've previously seen on PlayStation. But what is it that makes the DualSense Wireless Controller so special? And moreover, how does it work? We spoke to Toshimasa Aoki, Director of Product Management at Sony Interactive Entertainment, and first, Mike Daly, Lead Designer at Insomniac Games, to hear their thoughts on what sets apart this revolutionary device. One of the things that's so great about the DualSense is that, unlike sort of the, the steps forward in processing power and graphics power, the DualSense provides things that were never there before. The experience that you can get with haptics sort of providing more texture and context to the world was not even possible with controller vibration. And what you can do with the adaptive triggers similarly opens the door to functionality that you just couldn't get. That was one of the goals for the dual sense of, you know, players forgetting that they have a controller in their hand, that we wanted to connect, you know, the players in the game directly. Our goal was to seamlessly connect the player and the game and have the controller kind of disappear in between. Like, we don't want players to think about, oh, I'm pushing the button or I'm, you know, controlling. It's like, you're really in the game. The dual sense, I think, is, is next gen in the sense that it opens doors to game developers and to game experiences that really did not have a, a comparable experience any time before it. Anyone who's experienced the gentle patter of rain in Returnal or the sensation of being buffeted by wind in Astro's playroom will be familiar with the immersive power of the DualSense wireless controller's haptic feedback. If you've fired any of the weapons in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, you'll know how much of a game-changer the adaptive triggers are. But how does this technology work? It's a voice coil actuator. Thinking of it as like a small speaker vibrating based on the audio waves coming in. And that creates the fidelity and the range of the feeling they could get. The controller has weights that are moved by sort of high fidelity electromagnets. And they're able to basically produce vibrations with the level of fidelity that the speaker can produce sound waves. So you have control over frequency and amplitude. And even though that sounds like just two basic inputs, as you know from listening to audio, a great deal of nuance can come out of how you use those inputs to produce sensations. Because it is more, you know, direct audio file, it's easy to kind of, you know, boost up, boost down, change um, instantly. Uh, so that was a very, you know, big technology leap. Separate to the voice coil actuator, the adaptive triggers also are instrumental in achieving that next-gen level of immersion. Yeah, it's a separate uh, technology from the haptic. Inside, it's mo it's pretty simple. Well, if I say simple, the engineering team might get mad, but uh, <laughs> it's a complex thing that is made simple. Um, that it is uh, motors kind of pushing, you know, back to the triggers, and the way it pushes back is controlled by the games. Much like haptics itself, the ability to customize your trigger pull to make weapons feel different from each other and feel just more satisfying as a baseline just makes games strictly feel better than they did before. To me, it's basically like a thing that adds a layer of relatability to the weapon's experience. The adaptive triggers offer sensory feedback ranging from the half press, allowing you to aim and fire weapons with one finger, to accurately mimicking the sensation of drawing a bow and arrow. Because of the trigger has a long stroke, we are able to kind of split that into multiple levels. So as you pull every kind of step, we can make it even stronger. So that's where the bow feeling that as you go through that long stroke, you feel that the tension is getting stronger and stronger. That's definitely something that we wanted to have the players experience and that was the reason we selected the trigger because that was the button that had the most stroke. When it comes to connecting players to the games they are playing, it's not all about touch, however. The DualSense wireless controller also has the power to stimulate another of our senses. I think 
One perhaps underrepresented sort of hidden feature of the DualSense controller is that it's got that controller speaker, which is now actually more useful than ever because of haptics. Whether it's audio or visual or haptics, any type of game stimulus is more powerful when we're able to sort of access your senses on multiple avenues at once. And because the controller has its own speaker, we can give you a sound signal that your brain naturally associates more with the haptics you're feeling in the hand, just because it's sort of the same spatial awareness. And so by using the controller speaker very selectively, we can reinforce the haptics response itself in isolation from the rest of the game's audio soundscape that just makes the haptics themselves feel more relatable and realistic. The DualSense wireless controller's ability to spark multiple senses at once is an amazing feat of technology and design, but would mean nothing if it didn't add to the gameplay experience. Mike Daly explains how, while developing Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, the team at Insomniac Games split the gameplay enhancing power of the controller into two categories. So there's functional responses, which are cues to the player that something important has just happened in gameplay. So these are really valuable because they tell you things like you've collected more ammo or your weapon's fully charged. And that's really valuable to players. The other category of haptics is the experiential haptics, which are the responses that breathe life into the world and, and make things behave as your mind expects them to behave. Some games focus on the environment, like Returnal of Raindrops, and some teams focus more on kind of direct inputs of the weapon kind of feelings as well through the haptics. I can imagine there's going to be multiple new ways that will come out, which is exciting for me as well to see, you know, how the games are also going to evolve with this new technology and do what they do best of creating new experiences. We wanted the world to feel alive and so there's all sorts of like environmental haptics that you can go by or walk on or hit with your wrench. When you get to sort of like feel all the little explosions or feel the reloads, feel the equip animations, that's just one of the things that makes everything you do just feel incrementally a little bit better and more fun and more satisfying. There's an incredible versatility to the controller that makes it so much more than simply a conduit between player and on-screen avatar. And while the DualSense wireless controller excels at drawing us further into PS5's incredible worlds, it also celebrates and embellishes that which is often overlooked. The headline acts of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart may be the bombastic combat and lightning-fast interdimensional planet hopping, but one of Mike Daly's favourite features is something far more everyday. When you bring up the weapon wheel and, and you select each new weapon and it just gives that little click that's just like, okay, you're at the next weapon now. I think it's because a lot of the menu navigation is naturally sort of so quiet on your senses that the haptics really stand out and just make it more of a joy to do something even mundane like navigating menus and selecting different yeah. options. One thing Toshi Masa Aoki is excited by, the fact that this is technology that doesn't stand still. The firmware update capability that we have with the DualSense um, that as games come up with new ways of using, uh, we may need to adapt on the DualSense controller side of, you know, to enable that. But now we do have that capability as well. So it's not just like, here's a technology, go do it. It's more of, you know, let's make it better, uh, evolve it as we go. That's also exciting for me to see, you know, new ways the games are gonna be playing it, using it, um, so that we can deliver that awesome immersiveness to the players. One thing is certainly true. Whether it's experiencing rainfall on the alien planet of Atropos, feeling the kick of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart's black hole storm, or handling the rippling flames of a fiery blade in Demon Souls, the magic of the DualSense wireless controller is not something we can simply tell you about. Ultimately, you just have to pick one up yourself and start playing.
Give this video a like if you learned something new about the DualSense wireless controller. Tell us in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already so you never miss anything from the world of PlayStation. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you again soon. PlayStation.